Hello, today we'll learn how to procedurally play the chain and how to simulate that the most efficient and reliable way using VDP2 spheres and the bullet solver. If you like this and my other videos, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. Now on to Houdini. In an empty scene, let's create a geometry container and dive inside. So let's get our first chain link with torus. And let's make that 0.01 so that it has 10 centimeters. Uh, and let's uh, modify that so that it doesn't look like a donut. So let's go to the detail tab and check U wrap and change the an angle to 180. Okay, so you have this. And next step is let's uh, move that to the side. So transform. Let's make that 0 0.008. Uh, let's visualize that. Okay, then now let's uh, extrude that to the center, but first we have to uh, check uh, to, to group that uh, border edges. So let's group that by uh, edges and unshared edges. So now we have that, uh, that border group, let's call that borders. Now let's poly extrude. Set the uh, front transform to transform extrude front and set space to global. Now we are going to uh, put that at the center. So we are going to link that with the translate here. So just copy per meter and paste her to references. Um, the only thing is we have to check uh, the borders group here and we have to negate this value. Now we have half half of the geometry. Let's mirror that along the z-axis, and finally let's make it a little bit more thin. So 0.35, and that's our chain link. So now that we have uh, one link, let's uh, build uh, our curve. So we'll be able to input any curve just just for the sake of uh, easiness I'm going to create a line a straight line at the Z direction so you have something like this and it has two points so let's resample that and uh, let's make it a uh, subdivision curves so that is a bit, little bit smooth uh, and then we have to uh, group uh, the even uh, points of this uh, line and for that we are going to use the group by range which is a very handy node so let's call that even and group type is points so we're going to select one of uh, two points so if you visualize our group here we have this so Every, every other uh, point is selected now, so let's uh, split that group. And finally, let's sweep the chain link onto the curves. So we're going to sweep that with this. And now we have half of the curve. Let's, uh, let's transform our link so that it's, it's a little bit uh, smaller. Or uh, actually, let's modify our sample here. Okay, this looks good. So let's make the other half. So the other half will be the very same thing, but we, we're going to change the backbone curve and we are going to rotate the chain link. So 90 degrees. And if you merge now, We have this, let's again uh, change our resample so that we have uh, something better distributed. So this is our chain, completely procedural. So if we input another curve, let's try with another curve. Let's plug that. Let's build one curve from scratch. So 
so you can see it's completely procedural and it maintains uh, this nice distribution for the links okay so let's see how to simulate that with bullet and I've set the input line back to uh, straight uh, straight line and now we need to create the collision geometry so for that we are going to to go to our uh, original link and let's make a uh, PDB from polygons and you have to have a considerable uh, resolution uh, so that Houdini knows how to nicely pack your uh, spheres so let's PDB to spheres and the main idea here is that you have um, you have no gaps between the spheres so that it collides nicely so let's make our radius a little bit smaller so you have more spheres and let's up the sphere count a bit okay something like this we can always go back and change those values later so now that we have that we have to uh, again sweep uh, the geometry on our curves so let's copy those nodes here and just switch the inputs this go over here and this go over here and there you have it so this is our collision geometry made of uh, of spheres so now that you have that uh, we need to pack uh, this geometry so that uh, we can use the RBD packet uh, solver or object inside the DOP network and for that we are going to need the name attribute just to separate each link from one another so we're going to create all our attributes at the uh, at the point itself at the line itself and then uh, the sweep node will take care of transferring all those attributes for us so let's go to our resample node here and do an attribute create and uh, we create a name attribute class will be point and type will be string and let's call that piece and now we have to uh, use the back ticks so that uh, Houdini knows that you have to resolve that expression to a string so we, we are going to use the PTNN attribute itself so if you visualize our spreadsheet we have our piece 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth okay so let's uh, visualize on the original geometry which should al already have this uh, attribute set so let's visualize that by hitting the X shortcut key to create a visualizer node let's go and set the attribute to random the color type to random from attribute and the attribute is name and there you can see each uh, link is correctly named it, named so uh, the only thing is we need this attribute to be set at the primitives and other points so right now you can see it's set at the at the point uh, as a point attribute so let's promote that from point to primitive and the attribute is name all right so now we have the name attribute at the primitive uh, class let's do the same to our collision geometry and uh, one, just one thing we have to change for for the collision geometry is that the VDB2 spheres uh, has this preserve attributes and groups that will create automatically uh, this uh, name attributes for us which we are done uh, we are not interested in and also it's going to uh, make Houdini a bit confused on how to transfer the name attribute with the sweep node so let's get rid of that by unchecking the preserve attributes and groups and now if we take a look of, uh, at our uh, collision geometry we have the name attribute again let's attribute promote that to uh, primitive and let's visualize that and before that let's convert that to our geometry because right now uh, this is uh, primitives only and now is geometry so let's visualize that so random from attribute name and uh, the class is primitive and yeah sure enough uh, each link is correctly named okay so let's uh, delete don't forget to delete the convert node because we want to use the primitives and now we are going to send this to the dop network to simulate and uh, spheres is uh, is always a good way to simulate with bullet it's very very fast and stable so uh, let's first pack this collision geometry 
so we need to pack that and we need to use the name attribute and also we need to transfer that to the uh, output packet geometry so we have this so the name uh, attribute will be used to uh, build this path uh, attribute so let's uh, check this so if you don't use the name attribute it will create just one packet geometry but if you use that it could it will create packet fragments so it will look uh, through the uh, this uh, this name attribute we have as primitive and for every unique name you see 37 unique names it will create uh, a path attribute here so it will identify each piece separately okay and this transfer attribute is just that we have uh, the piece name itself back into the package geometry that uh, bullet is going to use to simulate each link separately and uh, this way we can uh, have uh, concave geometry simulated very fast okay so let's now create our dot net dive inside create a very basic simulation setup here it's over and a packet object and I'm also uh, use this I have this little setup uh, this, this little tube uh, created here just to have something to collide so let's use that using a stat study object on merging that into our tree we don't need a solver for that so let's point that to our alt collider and our package geometry will be our first contest geometry okay and one thing we have to check is that uh, just go into our package uh, object and bullet data tab and just check this create complex hooper set of connected primitives and let's play that and right now uh, is we have two uh, lower sub two low sub steps let's go to the solver and increase the sub steps still breaking let's try 30 it's better but it's still breaking and now we can uh, always uh, instead of uh, upping the sub steps we can go back to our uh, collision geometry and uh, start increasing our number of spheres let's try that because bullet deals very well with uh, large amounts of geometry so it's it's actually a, a balance between having decent amount of uh, collision spheres and also uh, having the right uh, radius and also with the sub steps so let's try adding more collision spheres for now so let's add the maximum spheres and let's down the radius to two maybe let's go back to our dot net let's see what happens now okay so it works good and you can see uh, that is very very fast almost real time and it has a very stable simulation a little bit of jittering we can which we can uh, we can try and up the sub steps a little bit more let's try 50 so you see it doesn't break the links and it's very very fast okay all right so now that we have that we have the simulation let's see how to transfer this movement back to the original geometry okay we are now back into the soft land and we are going to transfer this movement back to the original geometry and um let's dot import the simulation so we're going to use this network and the object name is the packet object uh, here and the import style will be fetch geometry from dot network so we have this very same thing okay now we need to uh, use the transform pieces node to transfer the movement and uh, right right after uh, I, I forgot to pack the original geometry so I need to do that too okay so pack now and remember to uh, use the name attribute and transfer the name attribute back so let's uh, use that to be transformed and now we need to three inputs the geometry to transform which is the original packet geometry the next one is the template points which are the um, the dope net uh, collision uh, spheres and now we need the rest geometry which will be the same geometry with a time shift for the first frame 
So let's use frame one and connect that. So uh, for the transform pieces to work, we will need this attribute to be at the point class. So uh, for now, we, if you remember, we have attribute promoted that to primitives. So let's do that once again back to points. So attribute promote from primitive to point name attribute. Let's do the same thing for our collision spheres. And now it surely works. And there you have it. Uh, it's a very, very uh, efficient way of simulating um, chains. And you can also, uh, for example, fix some of the links. Actually, let's do that right now, just to illustrate. So we are going to create again attributes at our line first. So let's say I want to group by range and I'm going to isolate the endpoints of this curve. So uh, the default will select everything. I, I'm going to select everything, but the first and end points. And uh, let's call that active and group type will be points again. And let's attribute create uh, the active attribute for this one because active is, is the attribute but it looks looks up for when simulating or not simulating stuff so let's call that active and let's use the active group uh, to set the value one uh, the default value will be zero which will be the end points and for that for those points uh, bullet will collide but will not uh, simulate with forces or contact with other objects so once we have that, we just need to uh, remember to transfer this attribute over to the packet fragments here. So let's transfer the active attribute. And that's really it. So if you simulate again, but it will uh, fix the endpoints for us. Okay. So yes, uh, this, this is it for this tutorial. And I hope you have learned how to uh, create this procedural chain and how to uh, have efficient collisions uh, for uh, for the simulation to have a real-time response. Uh, so thank you very much, and we we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.